Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now that the new MacBooks have started to arrive in consumers' hands with the M3 series of processors, we have some benchmark numbers. That means we can compare now the performance of the M3 series with the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite. And it'll be a really interesting battle. Windows against Mac OS yet again, but now not on x86, but on processors based on the ARM architecture. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So we've touched on the M3 and we've looked at the Snapdragon X Elite in various other videos here on this channel over the last week to 10 days. Now we've got some performance numbers so we can see what we're actually going to get in actual laptops. So just a reminder, Apple's M3 family of processors are three different processors. They've all got the same, basic same CPU and GPU, there's just more of them. So you get eight core CPU in the M3, 11 or 12 core in the M3 Pro, 14 or 16 core in the M3 uh, Max, and then either 10 core GPU, an 18 core GPU, or a 40 core GPU. So depending on the type of workload you're looking at, you can choose the right CPU and GPU to go through the three of them. Now it's different than the uh, Snapdragon X Elite, which in this first generation is just one processor. You've just got a 12 core processor, so you can't choose, but they're all high performance cores. So that's really an interesting design decision. And I had to cover why and how and what that means in my previous videos. But what does it mean for the benchmark? Okay, so here's quite a big graph. Just let me walk you through it. This is Geekbench, that's CPU only multi-threaded scores and single-threaded scores. In this graph, it's sorted by multi-threaded, so that's what we're gonna look at first of all. We'll look at single-threaded in a moment. But as you can see here, basically, the M1, the M2, and the M3 basically give you greater multi-threaded scores, even though they're eight cores each, because basically the core is faster in each one. So the M3 here gives you that interesting multi-threaded score there. Then you've got the M1 Max and the M1 Pro. Again, in this kind of 11,000, 12,000 region here, they, these three chips are very, very similar. Not identical, but very, very similar. But notice here, we've got the M1, the M2, the M3, the M1 Max, and the M1 Pro, and then we have the Snapdragon Elite running at 23 watts. Now, if you remember from my previous video that this is an actual Qualcomm reference device. It was on display during the tech summit uh, that Qualcomm held. It was available for journalists to see the results running. They weren't allowed to actually play with the device, but they were actually able to, the tests were actually run in front of them. And there were two configurations, a 23 watt device and an 80 watt device. And this is the 23 watt one, gives you the score here of 14,000. So that really is in the same ballpark as the M2 Pro, the M3 Pro and the M2 Max. But the Snapdragon X Elite 80 watts is 15,372. So in that sense, in multi-score, the Snapdragon X Elite beats every single M1 and M2 and M3 processor except for the M3 Max. Just let that sink in a moment. We're going to have a Windows laptop running Windows on ARM, Windows on Snapdragon, with a, a Snapdragon X Elite that beats every single currently available M processor except for the M3 Max in multi-threaded uh, scores. And then, of course, yes, the M3 Max, take your hat off to Apple, this is an amazing score here. Of course, there are lots of CPU cores in here, more than the 12 than you get in the Snapdragon X Elite, but that's what happens when you want to get multi-score. You add more cores and you get a higher score. Of course, there are the battery life and the thermals to consider, so you can't just keep adding them infinitely. But there you go, the M3 Max really is the king there. But the Snapdragon X Elite is in the same game, the same market as the M2 Pro and the M3 Pro and the M2 Max, all in that same area, and even at the 23 watt configuration. Now here's the same graph, but sorted according to single thread. So what have we got? Single thread is the M1, the M1 Max, and the M1 Pro, well of course, because it's got the same CPU core in it. Then you jump to the M2, you've got the M2, the M2 Pro, and the M2 Max. Again, those give you their scores. And then here's the thing to note here. The Snapdragon X Elite beats every single M2 chip in single threaded scores, okay? so it beats every single one. So the Snapdragon X Elite is an M2 killer. If you look at the previous graph and this graph, it is an M2 killer without any doubt whatsoever. What about the M3? Well, if you've got the 80 watt version of the Snapdragon X Elite, it is slower in single threaded performance than the M3 uh, by 5%. So it's in the same ballpark. So we're looking at a Windows on Snapdragon device that will be competitive with the uh, M3 in terms of single-threaded scores, 
slightly behind and in terms of multi-threaded scores as I showed in the previous slide beats everything except for this M3 Max which really is a monster. Okay, so there you have it. What do you think of that? Do you think there is a future now for Windows on ARM using the Snapdragon X Elite? Are you excited about this technology? Would you prefer to stick with the uh, MacBooks with the M3 series? Love to hear your comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these type of videos, why not stick around, become part of the community by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.